lead to Yah. Continuing on. Uh, within our last discussion of this series, we sought to answer the question, why do we become sick? Now, man's answer to this, to this question is centered around the germ theory. That is, we become sick and diseased due to microorganisms that which invade our bodies and wreak havoc and there, thereby cause us to become sick and diseased. These microorganisms, you know, uh, can't be seen with the naked eye uh, except for through magnification. And that's essentially, you know, how man believes that we get sick on the most part. And there's other theories out there, but the medical industry of today, you know, this is what they hold to. Now, but we learned that scripture teaches us something altogether different. But we learned from the last session that it's essentially due to breaking covenant with Yah via sin that we become sick in the first place. And, you know, and that's pretty much it from a scriptural perspective we become sick because of sin we discussed the various types of sin i.e. national sins and we talked about how the national sin of the U.S. that you know on the food and not keeping Yah's Yah's uh, <coughs> laws concerning letting the land rest how they done depleted the, the land of its mineral content and therefore the foods are the, uh, void of nutrients and as we talked about that all the way to the GMOs. You know, we talked about tribal or familial sin, you know, such as, you know, family diets that's been passed down from generation to generation, you know, that, that has an effect on the DNA of individuals. So they're born with inherent weaknesses. We talked about individual sins, you know, uh, things that we choose to do individually you know, that goes against Yah's word, as well as sins against nature. You know, and we talked about sins against nature and sins against Yah himself and even sins against oneself. We really got into sin last week. Yes. <laughs> I also gave the admonition that many of the foods that Yah deemed clean have become perverted through science and therefore may not actually be clean according to Yah's standards today, and that was the GMOs and, and things of that nature. We concluded that all such sins need to be repented of and converted from. That is, we need to be apologetic to Yah for, for having done such things and, and convert, that is, turn it and go the other way from them if we're to become well. Now, that said, we're going to finish out this topic today because uh, we didn't actually finish it last week. We're going to finish it out today. In the last session, we gave an example or two of sins against nature, and I said we'd delve into this topic more later on. Well, that time has come now. Therefore, we'll be discussing sin from the standpoint of breaking God's natural laws that stand outside of Scripture and the consequences for doing so. Natural law. Definitions. Natural, meaning inherent, having a basis in nature, reality and truth, not made or caused by humankind. That's the definition of natural. And law, an existing condition which is binding and immutable, cannot be changed. And there are some nat natural laws that Yah has put in place, that meaning that they, these laws are inherent, they have a basis in nature, they are reality and truth, and they're not made or caused by mankind. And they cannot be changed. See, it's important that we understand that Yah also has laws outside of Scripture, even as he has those within Scripture. Now, these laws are until... Within, um, these laws are entailed within in nature and are therefore referred to as natural law. They deal with that which is in which everything consists and exists. The whole of creation, that is all the universe, must adhere to them. These laws are mandatory as they are precise. They are as mandatory as they are precise and many, if not all of them, are mathematical in nature. Yah's laws which govern nature are hierarchical in character, in that secondary laws of nature are based upon primary laws of nature, which must remain exact in order for our universe to continue. Now, even though this natural law is on the most part outside the scope of Scripture, that is not to say that it's, not, that it's without mention within Scripture, because we can find mentions of it in Scripture. 
um, such as Yahoo or Jeremiah 33, 25 says, Thus saith Yahuwah, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. You know, he's speaking about this natural law. This natural law that governs day and night, that governs the ordinances of heaven and earth. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. You know, Yah is our creator. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He set everything in, in place, and he is in control of everything. He set certain laws in place for, for it to continue working the way it should. Proverbs 30, verse 4, who have ascended up into the heaven or descended, who have gathered the wind in his fist, who have bound the waters in a garment, who have established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name? Darkness tell. And we know that, of course, that's Yahuwah Elohim and his son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen? Psalms 24, 1 and 2, the earth is Yahuwah's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. See, these things are set in place. You know, they can't be moved because he put laws there to govern them. Yo, 28, 23 through 27, Elohim understandeth the way thereof, he knoweth the place thereof, because he made it. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds. How many of you know that the winds have weight? Wow. And, the, and he weighed the waters by measure. <laughs> by measure. Everything is mathematical. You know, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder. See, these things are not arbitrary. They work in accordance to laws that Yah has set in place in nature. Then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. You know, he figured out how, how to do all these things. And these things are immutable laws. Now, I pray that you can see and understand that Yah has indeed placed laws within nature by which everything in the universe, every plant, every, an animal, every rock, every particle of matter or ray of light is bound and have no choice but to obey. Yeah. But Yah has given man something that much of the rest of his creations don't have, and that's a free will i.e. the freedom of choice. See, we can choose to do things, you know, accordingly or not. That said, man has found ways to go against some of Yah's natural laws, but they're not actually breaking them. They're not actually breaking Yah's law, laws, more so they're breaking themselves upon them. They're breaking their flesh bodies upon them. And the result is the same as going against Yah's scriptural laws, and that is sickness and disease. Now there are some certain groupings, there are certain groupings of Yah's natural laws that coincide with us getting sick. One such group is the laws of planetary motion, which speak to the Circadian rhythms, which in turn speak to the cycles, that is the biorhythms of our that our bodies go through every 24 hours. Our bodies go through a certain rhythm every 24 hours. Now, it's due to the sun, the moon, and the earth's biorhythmic cycle and they're contrasting gravitational pulls. There are naturally occurring parallel cycles that exist within nature which coincide with all life on the planet. The shortest of such cycles are completed every 24 hours. It doesn't matter if you're a snail or a whale, from the mosquito to the eagle, whether the, you're Jack and Jill or Jane or Bill, all life upon the planet goes through these circadian rhythms. In fact, it could be said that all life upon Earth is simply a series of these cycles. Now, one of the first of these laws is the laws of planetary motion. That's what we were talking about. The, the law of planetary motion affects what I like to call the flow system of the earth. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left, and rhythm compensates. You know, there's a such thing in the body that's called balance, but balance in the body is called homeostasis. And homeostasis isn't what, isn't a picture of balance in, in the way that you might think, like a scale with, with two equal sides, and so you have something that's balanced like this. In all actuality, balance in the body, homeostasis is more, more so like this. 
You know, it's going from one extreme to the next. And if you imagine, if you would, a cardiogram, you know how the cardiogram goes all the way up, and then it comes all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Now, when it stops in the middle, and just, you know, usually it's boop, 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 boop. Now, when it stops in the middle, it goes boop. That is not the balance that we want. <laughs> I repeat, that is not the balance that we want. That's not the balance that we're looking for, not at all. You know, that's called flat line. That's, that's you know, that will get you DOA, dead on arrival, you know. So, you know, balance in the body is from one extreme to the next. See, because everything has polarity, meaning that it has you know, two sides, a yin and a yang, a, a, a north pole, a south pole, everything has polarity and, and, and everything in, this, in the universe has magnetism and, and this magnetism is pulling from one pole to the next. And, you, and it's supposed to be even, so it's, it's going back and forth. But when it becomes, it starts to get perverted, then everything that's within that that area becomes perverted as well. Okay, now these rhythms or cycles are, are termed circadian rhythms. And they govern energy. Now there's three types of energy. There's matter, which is a type of energy. There's electrical en energy, and there's heat energy. Those are your three types of energy. You know, and everything, you know, is made up of energy. You know, such as table, take a table for instance, or, or better yet, uh, take something that we can eat, take, take an apple. You know, uh, it's matter, but yet it still contains energy. You know, and when you eat it, you can, you, you receive calories, and calories is a type of heat energy. You know, and when that energy escapes, our body can use it. You know, so, point being, these rhythms, they govern energy. They govern its, its production, its storage, and its discharge. Now that includes the circadian, that is the or the uh, biological rhythms within our flesh bodies as well, which are also sub subject subject to these circadian rhythms caused by the laws of planetary motion. These biological rhythms within our bodies dictate periods of tissue growth, tissue repair, digestion, assimilation, elimination. Etc. Additionally, these biological rhythms coincide with brain activity, body temperature, blood pressure, hormone levels, in addition to many other imperative body um, bodily functions. You know, so you have to uh, know that these things are it's, it's crucial. They play a crucial aspect on our on our lives, and we just don't know about them. You know, these magnetic pulls. You know, the the, the sun has one type of magnetic pull, whereas the moon has another type. You know, and betwixt, and the Earth itself has a magnetic pull. The Earth and the Moon have both have South Pole magnetic pulls, where the Sun and what's called the Van Allen Belt, which is above the Earth, both have anionic uh, magnetic pulls or North Pole magnetic pulls. And betwixt these two pulls, you have the ocean, which is full of salts. Salts are minerals. Minerals are metals. You know, they're pulling it one way, and then they're pulling it another way, and that's how you get your tides. And, you know, and that's how you get this stuff going back and forth. You know, now, if these magnetic pulls are strong enough to pull the oceans, then what do you think about these little flesh bodies that are 75 to 80 percent water? That's full of minerals, which are metals. Do you think it'll have an effect on them as well? Of course it does. And that's what dictates these circadian rhythms. You know, because these things are set by Yah. Man can't mess with them. You know, and you can work with them, or you can work against them. You know, and I suggest that people work with them, because these are just as much as Yah's laws as thou should not steal. You know, there's a law of gravity. And if you think that you can defy it and try to walk off a cliff, you're going to be sadly mistaken. There's consequences to defying Yah's laws, no matter if they're written in Scripture or if they're written in nature. 
Okay? Now, another group of natural laws that is important to our discussion are Yah's laws of chemistry. Life requires a specific chemistry. Our bodies are powered by chemical reactions and depend on, on laws of chemistry operating in a uniform fashion. Life as we know it could not be possible if the laws of chemistry was any different than what they are. You know, that's how you, I mean, I mean anybody who really looks into these things, is you, can, you, you have to add a book and you have to come to a conclusion that there's an L because it's too perfect. Any, any strain to the left or to the right and life wouldn't even be possible. You know, it's, it's that precise. The laws of chemistry gives different properties to various elements by which the earth and everything originated in it are made up of. Now this is what we call the periodic table. And the body has most if not all of these elements within. It. You know, and they have an effect on our bodies. If we get too much of them, it has an effect. If we don't have enough, it has an effect. We need the precise amount. The chemistry has to be right in, in order for life to exist the way y'all intended. You know, stray a little to the left or a little to the right, and you start having problems. You know, everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has this pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet all truths are but half truths, and all paradoxes may be reconciled. You know, you just need to know the other half. You know, and that's what we was talking about with the polarity. You know, there's, there's, there's always this constant pulling back and forth within, within us, within the universe, within everything that Yah has made. Another of Yah's laws found outside of scripture which speak to why we become sick is his law of biogenesis. Now this is a well-known law of life. The law of biogenesis simply states that life always comes from life. That's pretty simple and straightforward, right? This is what Yah has told us as well as observational science has found out. Organism, organisms reproduce other organisms after their own kind. Now, historically, Louis Pasteur disproved one alleged case of spontaneous generation, because they used to think that things just spontaneously generated. You know, he showed that life comes from previous life. Since then, we have seen that this law is universal with no known exceptions. And this is, of course, is exactly what we would expect from Elohim. Perfection. Whenever we knowingly or unknowingly fall short or miss the mark of any of Yah's laws of nature, we find ourselves in a type of sin. From this sin, there will eventually arise dire consequences to pay, especially when it comes to the aforementioned laws of nature and good health, those ones we just went over. Uh, we read in Luke 12, 47, And that servant which knew his Adonai's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. When you know better, you often do better. But he that knew not and did, did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. You know, the more you listen to this series, the more you're going to learn. The more you learn, the more you're going to be responsible for. Yes. Amen? Amen. The law of biogenesis equals evolution debunked. You know, the law of biogenesis says that organisms, organisms come from other organisms of like structure, of like kind, rather. You know, just like Yah said, you know, things reproduce after its own kind. You know, in other words, we did not evolve. You know, there was, there was no big bang that led to the fish that led to the amphibian that led to, you know, the uh, four-legged animal that led to the ape that led to the man, so on and so forth. That's a bunch of malarkey. It doesn't wash, you know, with the word. And it doesn't wash scientifically either. To illustrate how these laws play a part in our health, we'll consider a couple of ailments, a couple common ailments. Say high blood pressure and arthritis. 
Okay? Now, due to y'all's natural laws, um, we'll take atmospheric, atmospheric, ah, atmospheric pressure. You know, uh, due to the, the planetary, uh, the laws of planetary motion, atmospheric pressure is built up. You know, and it's, it's created and then in turn has an effect on our health. Say, for instance, you know, now people don't think about this, but say, for instance, you know, you, you look at the news and it says that the uh, atmospheric pressure is going to be high today, right? Mm -hmm. And you go to the doctor, you know, you're going to have your, your, your yearly checkup or what have you. You know, and they check your pressure and your blood pressure is high. You know, now your blood pressure could be high simply due to the atmospheric pressure because the atmospheric pressure has an effect mm. on your blood pressure. And it will cause your blood pressure to fluctuate. The more atmospheric pressure, the higher your blood pressure will go. Mm. Let me give you an illustration so that you can, you can see this. You know, see, your body has a pressure within itself. And the pressure within your body is pushing out. And that's why you don't collapse. Mm. Now, this, this pressure that's pushing out is centered around the pressure that's being pushed in. See, the atmospheric pressure pushes in on us. And the pressure within our bodies pushes out. So, like I say, so that we don't collapse. Now, to see what I'm, what I'm saying, imagine a scuba diver. A scuba diver, when he goes into the depths of the, of the sea, the atmospheric pressure becomes very great. Therefore, he needs scuba gear, you know, so that, they, that he can maintain the proper pressure because if he didn't have it, it would literally smash him. Okay? Everybody can see that? Now, just the opposite is true as well. You know, now take a, uh, an astronaut, for instance. An astronaut goes up into space where the pressure is very what? Very light. There's actually no pressure. But you still have pressure within your body. And if they didn't wear the space suit, that maintains the pressure, their body, the pressure from their body will literally cause them to blow up like a balloon and explode. You know, and that's why they have to wear this astronaut suit. Because it keeps the pressure. So these are your two extremes. You know, now also, they notice, you know, this is why before you go scuba diving or whatever, they ask you, do you have any blood pressure issues? Why? Because when you go down into the depths, the pressure will become so much greater, it will, cause, it will cause the pressure to be pushing in on your body. And if you have high blood pressure already, you can stroke, stroke out or have a heart attack. So that's why they don't let people with blood pressure issues go scuba diving. Make sense? You know, so just think about that for a minute. You go to your yearly checkup, and the barometric pressure outside or with barometric pressure and atmospheric pressure, same thing, you know, synonymous terms. Um, the pressure outside is high. So that causes your blood pressure to go up. You go in to have your exam and you get diagnosed with high blood pressure. You leave out with a lifelong prescription to high blood pressure medication. You never had high blood pressure. It was just the day in which the atmospheric pressure was strong. Now put this in conjunction with something that you may have ate that you shouldn't have, you know, that also caused your blood pressure to be high that day. Or you're going through a stressful situation, which also could cause your blood pressure to be high that day. You know, and here it is, you can see how millions of people get prescribed on medications, not only you know, that they don't need. They really didn't need it. They really didn't have high blood pressure. Some people have white coat syndrome. They get nervous around doctors. And when they get nervous, their blood pressure go up. So they go in, and their blood pressure go up, and they leave out with a lifelong prescription to have blood pressure medication. And take note that I said lifelong, because they, you ask them how long do I have to take it, they tell you, for the rest of your life. Some people are on four or five different yeah. blood pressure medications. Yeah. Amen. You know, 
Many people are ignorant to Yah's laws of nature, but you know, this is why this is important. Because if you know it's a high pressure day, you know, then you can have this, and you can at least be cognizant enough and have this in mind, well, my pressure may be high because, you know, the uh, atmospheric pressure is high today. You know, also, if you're living in a region where at a higher altitude, then you're going to have less of a chance of having high blood pressure because the atmospheric pressure is lighter. If you live below sea level, that atmospheric pressure is going to be much stronger, so you're going to have more of a possibility of having high blood pressure. You see what I'm saying? You, you know, the way they go about things, it's not right. You know, it's, it's certainly not scientific. You know, uh, you know, so there could be many reasons why your blood pressure is showing high. That doesn't mean that, that does not mean that you need to be on high blood pressure medications for the rest of your life. I'm just telling you. Now the truth of the matter is that the aforementioned consequences paid for our transgressions against Yah's laws contained within scripture, as well as those without, are oftentimes paid at the expense of one's good health and well-being. You know, ignorance is not bliss. What you don't know can hurt you. You know, if you know you have high blood pressure and you know your blood pressure tends to be Right on the high side, you don't have no business going to school with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you know this stuff, then, you know, just think about all the people who didn't know and died scuba diving before they figured it out. Before they figured this out and started giving the, the admonition, oh, well, if you have high blood pressure, you can't go. You know, you can just imagine how they found that out. Now, the crux of the matter is that no one, teaching, no one is teaching the sheeple where they're falling short that they might at least have an opportunity to repent and convert and align themselves with Yah's laws. You know, but when we become cognizant of these things, you know, we can align ourselves. Yaakov or James 5, 19 and 20 says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and won't convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. You know, Throughout this series, you're going to learn some things where you're going to be able to help convert people from, from the errors that they're making from truth. You know, countless sheep will have unknowingly partook in communion, that is Yahshua's covenant, while either having a full understanding of it or, or were oblivious to the laws and commands of Yahshua that govern his covenant. Nevertheless, there are still consequences to such actions. You know, his laws are etched in stone, so to speak. They're immutable. Likewise, how many people live this life within these flesh bodies which were created to work congruent to Yah's laws of nature and either don't have a full understanding of them or are oblivious to that such laws even exist? You know, now, that's not to say that you have to go and learn all these laws. What it speaks to is lifestyle. You know, and when you get back to the lifestyle that Yah intended, you know, then you would actually be congruent with all these laws. Now, remember how I stated that Yah's laws of nature are hierarchical in character? Well, Yah's law of biogenesis is subject to his laws of chemistry, which are in turn subject to Yah's laws of planetary motion. And they dictate the correct um, Circadian rhythms of the planet, which speaks to the biological cycles or rhythms our bodies go through every 24 hours. Now, we're going to delve more into these things later, but for now, it is imperative that you understand that rather knowingly or unknowingly, when we violate these laws of nature that God set in place, that we are, in fact, missing the mark and are therefore in a type of sin. Now, it may not be the type of sin that will cause one to lose their salvation, but it's most certainly a type that can cause one to lose their good health. For example, Yah has allowed us to eat clean meats and that which came from a seed um, as food. Well, what do you think would happen if one decided to eat rocks? That is something that is not clean and didn't come from a seed. Most people would agree that eating rocks is absurd and would quickly cause dire consequences to one's health. But the reason most would agree is because most people can just about picture within their minds the consequences of doing such an absurdity and not um, because Yah said so. 
In other words, you know, they can see that, so that's why they roll with it. But when y'all say don't eat pork, they can't really see it, you know, and they don't really know what's happening to the body, so they have a problem accepting that. You know, but if y'all said don't eat rocks, oh yeah, well that's a no-brainer. You know, <laughs> of course <laughs> we're not gonna eat rocks. You know, but he say don't eat shrimp, lobster, you know, scallions, scallops, you know, all, all these, this type of stuff. And oh, wait a minute, hold on. I know a lot of people eat that. It, it, no, nothing happened to them. You know, are you gonna trust him? You gonna trust his word or aren't you? See, because he set these things in place. He knows. We don't. Now, there is a reason why he said that. You know, because they actually digest too fast in the body. And your body can't extract any nutrients from them. And they actually go on to cause more damage than they do, you know, health. Because you're not getting anything from them. Except for, you know, uh, an abomination to your flesh. <laughs> you know, so these things exist for a reason. You know, and if y'all said so, that should be enough. And herein lies the problem with the sheep of the day. The beliefs that govern their lives don't come exclusively from Yah. If Yah said it and decreed it within his laws of nature, that should settle it. You know, we have to try to find a way to bring every aspect of our lives back to Yah. You know, as the title of this series, all, series, all roads lead to Yah. All roads truly lead to Yah. Yes. And if you don't see how a road in your life is leading to Yah, then you need to stop traveling the road, sit down, and figure it out. Maybe you're on the wrong road. Make sense? Yes. You might be on the wrong road. If it's not leading to Yah, then you most certainly is on, are on the wrong road. Now you need to figure out which road you need to be on and get on it. Now, due to ignorance, on the most part, many sheep today live lifestyles that are not congruent with Yah's laws found within his creation and scripture. For instance, the law of biogenesis teaches us that life comes from life, yet many sheep insist on eating death in the form of dead foods, such as fast foods, dead, other processed foods, dead, as well as overcooked foods, you know, you can cook food to death, too. You know that, right? <laughs> now, this is about as absurd as eating rocks, for one cannot eat death and expect to gain life from it. You can't go through all your life eating dead stuff and expect to, to have a healthy life. That don't make sense. Yah's laws concerning circadian rhythms teach us that there are optimum times for us to eat. Yes, there's a time for us to eat. There's a time for us to digest, assimilate, and rest. And if one is eating when their body's trying to digest or assimilate, or if one wants to rest when their body is naturally wants to get up, or even worse, if one wants to stay up when their body's beginning begging for rest, it's not hard to see health issues down the line for such an individual. You know, um, Remember the, uh, the uh, what they call midnights, the midnight shift? Mm -hmm. What was the term they used for the midnight shift? Graveyard, Graveyard shift. Now, where do you think that term came from? <laughs> you know, it does have an effect yeah. on your body. Yes, There's a time that's, um, that Yah has set in place for us to rest. Now, you can go against that, but there's going to be consequences to pay. That's all I'm saying. These laws are set in place, and you really can't break them, but you can break yourself upon them. Now, that said, the health issues that will eventually result are seldom attributed to the sins against the laws. When, these, when you start feeling the effects of it, you know, most people, they, have, they, they don't attribute it to breaking y'all's laws of nature or breaking y'all's scriptural laws. You know, uh... Because God's laws are conducive to good health and our going against them is the reason we become sick in the first place. Now that said, we're going to speak about one last law of Yah before ending this subject of why we become sick. In Galatians 6, 7, we read, Do not be deceived. Elohim cannot be mocked. The man reaps what he sows. Another way of saying this is all of your actions or inactions have consequences and reproduce and produce specific results. 
This is the law of cause and effect. See, and we need to understand that you can have a cause way down here at the root of something, right? But the, the effect manifests way up here. Way up here in the high part of the tree. You know, you can have something going down, going on, a cause in the roots, and it will affect the top of the tree. You know, for instance, you can, you can suffer with constipation and wonder why you're having headaches. Something going on down at the root, <laughs> but having an effect at the top of the tree. Amen? Amen. You know, you can have, you know, sugar handling issues and wondering why you having headaches or wondering why you keep passing out yes. or wondering why you're shaking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See, but you'll never equate it with the cause because it's way down here. See, and this is the way all y'all's laws are. You know, you can, you can keep on going online and you, you think you're getting away with it. You know, but eventually there's going to be an effect that manifests from the cause of you lying. And, really, and, and by the time the effect manifests, you may not be able to equate it with the, a lie, the lie that you told. You understand that? You see that in scripture too. You see where Yah rebukes someone, but he don't punish them. He don't punish them until years later. They do something wrong today and he tell you, okay, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you for that. I can't let that slide. You know, but you don't see the effect until years later. Take David, for example. You know, David got with Bathsheba, killed her husband, Paul Uriah, upright uh, man. Trying to do right, trying to serve in Yah's army, doing the best he can. And here it is, he get knocked off because King David won his wife. You see what I'm saying? You know, now King David, he go ahead and get his wife and everything, and you were you right dead and gone. It's it's way down the line. Y'all send the prophet Nathan to him and tell him you wrong. And I'm about to do something to you. But something don't happen to him until still a couple of years later. His son come up against him, try to take the kingdom from him, usurp him, you know, and a whole lot, bunch of mess follows because of his sin. See, but that, that cause was way down the line. You know, the effect happened way down the line. The cause was way previous and the effect was way down the line. And see, and that's the way these things work. Yeah, you can eat pork you for 20, 30 years, and it may not, you know, you may not feel the effects. But that does not mean that the effects aren't manifesting. Mm -hmm. And by the time you do feel the effect, mm -hmm. now you don't have the wherewithal to equate it to the original cause. Mm -hmm. See, and you have to understand this, you know, because the system that we, the medical system of the day has a one-size-fit-all uh, system. In other words, you know, you have someone come in, they all have the same effect. We'll just say high blood pressure, since we was talking about high blood pressure. Okay? They all come in, you got five people that come in with high blood pressure. They all have the same effect. They give them one size fit all, they all, they give them all high blood pressure meds, same pill. Even though these five people can have five different causes as to why they have the same effect. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody. High blood pressure could be caused by constipation. Another person's high blood pressure could be caused because they got because they they're living in uh, under stressful circumstances. You know, so they stressed out, so they so they having having headaches. I mean, um, high blood pressure. Another person they could they could have um, too many too much sugars in their system, so it causes them to have high blood pressure. Somebody else may have too many salts in their system, i.e. minerals, and it causes them to have high blood pressure. And then you have combinations of, 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 of these things that can cause a person to have high blood pressure. All these different causes that are way different causes, but manifesting the same effect. So now you see why, why that one size fit all don't work. 
You can't give someone the same thing just because they have the same effect. You can't just treat the symptoms. You have to get to the cause. And see, and they have this one size fit all approach, and it's very dangerous. You know, take uh, statins, for instance, you know, such as Lipitor, you know, they, that they give for um, high cholesterol. Now, it helps fight against high cholesterol, but it can cause amnesia. You know, there was a case of this, this guy, you know, he went to the store and came back and didn't know who his wife was. Just like on TV. Totally, you know, couldn't remember nothing. You know, or antihistamines, like Allegra, can cause muscle pain and, and back aches. Oh, and by the way, statins can also cause uh, stiffness and muscle, muscle weakness. See, but you're taking this stuff, but you'll never equate the muscle aches, the back pains, the stiffness, you, you won't necessarily equate it with the statin, or you won't equate it with the Allegra. You see what I'm saying? You know, you have something called Besseltec, um, or the popular name is uh, Enlopril. It's a, it's a drug designed to treat high blood pressure and congestive heart failure. However, it can affect almost all your five senses. It can cause you to lose your sense of smell, taste, have ringing in your ears, um, eye problems like blurred vision, dried eyes. All of these I refer to as minor side effects. Really? What if you're having all of them at the same time? That's not going to be minor. You have something called Ali, which is, uh, or Ali, which is a weight loss drug designed to prevent the body from absorbing fat. Now, it can cause gas accompanied by an oily discharge and uncontrollable bowel movements. You know, you taking this stuff and next thing you know, you're crapping on yourself. You know, Paxil is a drug used to treat everything from depression to post-traumatic stress disorder. But it can cause what they call suicidal ideation. In other words, it can cause you to kill yourself or someone else. And a lot of these, these mass murders that you see going on, you look behind them and you'll see a drug. See, but they don't tell you that. Because these, especially these antidepressants, you know, they have a real strong, a real strong effect, especially on, on people under 30. Cause them to uh, have suicidal thoughts and, or murderous thoughts. You know, and a lot of these young young cats, these young kids that that are that they're that they're uh, seeing done these these mass murders. You look behind them, you see every, every one of them was on medication. Check it out. You'll see that they were on some type of antidepressant. You know. See these these things. These things, you know, you take them for. They give them for a wide range of effects or for one effect, but not taking into account that there's a wide range of causes, I should say. They give them for, they give them for this one size fit all effect, not taking into account that they have a wide range of causes, and if you're not treating the cause, you're just treating the effect. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, you get cancer over here in this limb right here, that's, you know, that's the effect, right, coming from this cause, so you get, you get cancer over in this limb. Doctors say, okay, we're going to take this laser and we're going <clears> to <throat> cut that limb off. You did not deal with the cause, so whatever caused it is going to cause the effect to pop back up again. May not pop up in that limb no more because it's not there, but it's going to pop up again somewhere. You know, and this is why I try to tell people you can't cut away cancer. You can, you know, but the tumor that you're cutting away isn't the cancer, it's the effect of the cancer. Whatever's causing that tumor is the cancer. That's the real problem. You know, you can't just deal with the effect and not deal with the cause. You know, and this is why you see people who done had, you know, survivors that, you know, of cancer that done had cancer three and four times throughout their life. You know, 
they keep manifesting and they keep on going and, you know, let them get either cut it away or burn it away or poison it. And then it pops up somewhere else. You know, it's cause and effect. You have to understand this. Now, y'all has given us free, free, a free will, the freedom to choose. You are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequence of your choice. You don't get to choose the consequences. You get to choose what you, what you want to do, but you don't get to choose the consequences. You know, every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to the law. Laws that Yah has put in place. Chance is but a name for a law not yet recognized. There are many places of causation, but nothing escapes the law. That's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing unto you.